Okay. Hit it, Tony. Wow. See that cloud? And shooting today is Tony. What's up? What do they call uh, Jolly Ranchers in Spanish? How do you say that? Jolly Ranchers in Spanish? <laughs> no. Hello everyone, this is Jeff with Tal Player Mouse. We have a slight variation of the water bullet, which we shot a couple months ago with kind of dismal results. This time we've taken about a quarter ounce of lead shot, put it in the nose, and filled the remainder with very fine rust powder. They are very nose heavy, and we hope with that long tail on there, they'll fly straight. Out in the field, we'll take some scissors and snip off part of the stem with some very interesting results. Using powder, we won't have to worry about the hydrostatic shock, which was the downfall of the water bullets. And if these things aren't weird enough already, we load these rounds backwards into the shell, and when it's fired, it'll actually flip around and start flying straight. That's the theory. Let's see if it works. Okay, hit it, Tony. <laughs> oh, that was cool. Like a tracer. There we go, Jeff. Okay. Wow! You see that cloud? Yeah. Tony? Oh, that was cool. All right, hit it, Tony. <laughs> okay, hit it, Tony. Wow! I'm really kind of torn at what to call these things. They're such a bizarro round. I've never seen anything like these things before. Now, I imagine instead of using rust powder, fill them full of, like, chili powder, and maybe police could use them to fire over the crowds of, quote, peaceful protesters as they're looting and uh, rioting and, and doing all that stuff. But it was really cool because they actually worked, and they worked very consistently. Although they didn't fly as straight as we had hoped, they'd certainly disperse the powder very well. So as these flew along, they were actually losing mass because of the powder coming out. But they were still, they still had that quarter ounce of lead shot, which kind of helped carry them through the air. They worked well in this long range dispersal mode. Next, we'll see how they work in a close range grenade mode. This is what the round looks like after we snipped it with some scissors, leaving that stem wide open so that the powder can disperse. It's flexible enough that it can be loaded into a pump shotgun easily. Hey. Oh. Okay, hit it. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> now in this close range grenade mode, these things really worked well. These rounds still weigh about one ounce, and of that weight, about a quarter ounce of that is lead shot. And that lead shot really helps carry the energy, plenty of energy to blow through this truck door. Now again, if you imagine that was chili powder blowing into the interior of the car, that'd be really effective. Now once again, they leave a nice trail of powder behind, and when they hit any uh, object, they'll just explode and uh, disperse that powder completely. And of course, we didn't have to snip the ends of the stems. You know, just when they hit anything, they would have dispersed all the powder. Now, even though they still seem to tumble and corkscrew around a little bit, they're definitely accurate enough to get the job done. Whatever the job is. Wow, see that cloud? Now this shot was just a, kind of a practice shot more than anything. And Tony actually shot it high. It was like one of the first shots that he took using these rounds. But it looked like it blew through that uh, wood planking behind the ball. It's hard to tell though. 
but we had a heck of a lot of fun shooting these. They were the weirdest, hinkiest, goofiest rounds we've ever shot. And we've definitely shot a lot of weird stuff. Often half the battle is just having the round survive the initial acceleration and shock of being shot out of a shotgun. I really don't know what the exact purpose of these rounds would be, but we were just studying, you know, what what they do flying in a supersonic envelope. I'm still at a loss of what exactly to call these a good descriptive name for them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching.